Over 10% of the entire population in the U.S. has been diagnosed with diabetes, and the estimated unknown cases are staggering, potentially adding another 7 million or so people with diabetes to this already large figure. Once you have diabetes, you may know that your primary care physician encourages an eye exam every year, but why? In today's video, we'll cover the ways diabetes can affect your eyes. This is a must watch if you've been newly diagnosed with diabetes or your doctor has recently recommended an eye exam due to your diabetes. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to eye school with me, Dr. D. Welcome, make yourself comfy, and get ready to learn about the basics of diabetes and the eye. So before we get started today, this channel is all about eye education, and I love creating this community of pupils. You can catch all my previous eye school episodes in the playlist I've curated below. From cataracts to dry eyes to safety with cosmetics around the eyes, all prior videos are sorted and categorized. It's no secret that diabetes can and does affect the eyes. After all, the eyes are a peripheral organ connected to the rest of you, so it makes sense that they can be affected just as any other part of your body. In addition, the eyes are the only place in the entire body that blood vessels can be seen directly. Because of this, your eye care provider has a direct look at your cardiovascular health and is often able to see subtle changes very early on in a disease process. So here are five of the most common ways that diabetes can actually affect your eyes. The first is just simple vision fluctuations as your blood sugar changes. The most common complication by far of diabetes that I see are these fluctuations in a person's actual prescription. When your blood glucose levels are high or wildly fluctuating, your vision fluctuates as well. You experience this as blurry vision, but what you may not realize is that when your vision is just blurry when your sugar is off, there is actually a change happening in your prescription. This happens because the lens of the eye changes shape and takes on more fluid when blood sugar readings are high. In addition, the vision can fluctuate due to macular edema. Different mechanisms for the vision change in this case, but macular edema will often cause a hyperopic shift in prescription. The difficulty with changing prescriptions in diabetic patients is that they continue to change, so it's usually best to try to wait until your blood glucose or A1C has stabilized before we actually finalize your glasses prescription. Otherwise, you can waste some serious money on glasses with a prescription that is fluctuating over time. If you recently had an eye exam and your vision was much, much different, it's very possible that you need to wait a couple of months while your blood sugar stabilizes so that you can get your prescription rechecked on, an, on a future date and you'll get a more true reading at that time. The second thing to know about how diabetes affects your eye is that it can result in decreased healing or even neurotrophic keratitis of your cornea. So long-term diabetes is known to cause nerve issues in the feet, for instance, but it's a lesser known fact that the nerves of the cornea can be impacted long-term as well. Neurotrophic keratitis can occur in diabetes, as I discuss in this video, which I'll link above. This is a video I did all about neurotrophic keratitis and a new treatment for it. So what you wanna do is ask your doctor to test your corneal sensitivity at your next diabetic eye exam. It's a quick and easy test that any eye care provider can do. It requires no extra equipment and it gives great information about your corneal health. In addition, as I talk about in my neurotrophic keratitis video, there's now a treatment available to help regain corneal sensitivity and reduce the impact of neurotrophic keratitis. The third important thing to know if you have diabetes is that cataracts do form more quickly in patients with diabetes. Because of the changes that continually occur in the lens of the eye with blood sugar changes, cataracts do tend to come on more quickly in diabetic patients. In addition, if you require shots in the eyes or laser procedures to control your diabetes, cataracts can form more quickly because of those additional procedures being done. You can also check out my cataract video as well as my video on tips about cataract surgery in order to prepare if you're going to have cataract surgery. 
So number four is probably the most talked about and it is a big one. This is diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema. So this is what happens to the back of your eye when you're diabetic. It's important to say that entire lectures, weekend workshops, and books have been written on diabetic retinopathy. So we are not going to attempt to cover every detail here. The basics of diabetic retinopathy are that the blood vessels in the eye become impaired over time from diabetes and are less able to do their job, which is to deliver oxygen to the eye. With leaky blood vessels, blood begins to seep out and we can actually see that accumulate in your retinal tissues as happens in non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which I have a picture of right here. Then, because the blood and therefore oxygen is not being delivered where it needs to go, the retinal and ocular tissues become starved of oxygen. Doing the best they can with what they've got, they then attempt to grow their own new blood vessels, which is when we call it proliferative diabetic retinopathy. These new blood vessels wreak havoc on your retina. They cause scarring and even retinal detachments. Treatments are centered around stopping the body from growing new blood vessels, injection of what we call anti-VEGF agents. VEGF stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. And, it, and we can also kill off or laser the tissues that are signaling that growth factor. So it's called panretinal photocoagulation. It's laser surgery for proliferative diabetic retinopathy. In addition, there's another condition called diabetic macular edema, where the macula of the eye is swollen, and that does cause vision fluctuations. And all of these things, diabetic retinopathy, proliferative and non-proliferative, can negatively impact your vision in a big way, causing vision loss and blindness. Number five way that diabetes can affect the eye is an increased risk of glaucoma. So diabetes itself does not directly cause glaucoma, but we do know that there's an increased prevalence of glaucoma in diabetic patients. So remember, correlation does not equal causation, but in this case, there is a correlation, so it becomes even more important for you if you're diabetic to be seen yearly for your eye exams, not just to check for that diabetic retinopathy, or any of the diabetic changes we've talked about today, but in addition to screen you for glaucoma. Glaucoma is a disease of high pressure in the eyes that causes damage to your eyesight over time. Unfortunately, with this disease, there's no symptoms, typically until late in the disease process when significant vision has already been lost. So it's especially critical to be evaluated yearly. So these are all kind of you know, negative things and it can certainly be very overwhelming, especially if you were just diagnosed with diabetes. I'm sitting here telling you all these horrible things that can happen. And so your next question might be, well, what can I do about it? There must be something I can do. And there absolutely is. It is critical to control your blood glucose. Simplistically, I tell patients that there are two factors that impact your risk of diabetic retinopathy, diabetic changes in your eyes the most. It's the length of time you have the disease and the amount of control you have, the control level over it. And you can't really help at this point when you were diagnosed with diabetes if you've had it for five years or 30, but what you can control is your control level. You've got to get a handle on that. And that starts with regular um, primary care visits, as they call you back, eye care visits every year, and just working day in and day out on your diet, your exercise, um, and with your whole team of professionals to get those levels under control. I hope this video has been helpful to you, helping you understand some of the things that diabetes can do to your eye if it's not controlled. But the good news here is that the better your control, um, the more you can control what happens to your eyes themselves in general. That is it for today's iSchool lesson. Today's fun fact is don't purchase new glasses if your prescription is fluctuating. Class is dismissed and I'll see you next time.